Uh, can you just uh, tell us uh, how do you think the uh, the organisation of the uh, uh, conference has been so far? Well, as I stood in the lines for three hours to try and get in on the first day, I wasn't particularly impressed. Question, and that's unfortunate. But the point is not that. That's on the side. Do you get an agreement? Will Copenhagen be associated with the agreement? I think it will be. We're in the darkest before the dawn at the moment. It almost reminds me when I was the negotiator at Kyoto. Everybody says there's not going to be agreement. It's a kind of bracket period. If you look at them, the brackets are left empty, aren't they? What is the amount of emissions that are going to be cut? And all nations can play a part in that. What is the amount of money that's going to be in to help the developing countries? That's what it's about. North and south, rich and poor. And we and the rich have the biggest responsibility in this. I think we've got, as Gordon Brown call for all the leaders to come in at Kyoto decided in the last couple of hours I think we'll start find exactly the same here not a legal agreement never possible to be an agreement I mean a legal agreement but it will be a political one but it's got to have credibility and then the details will be sorted out in the coming cops in the next 12 months um, where, where do you see the breakthroughs coming well, the breakthroughs have to be, can you judge it, have we done sufficient to meet the scientists' concern about not having the temperature rise more than 2 degrees? I think the argument from G77 about reducing it to 1.5 is really to put the pressure on about emissions, but don't introduce new material just 48 hours before the agreement, and I think they know that. So we'll be judged on how much we reduce uh, emissions for the scientific warning about climate change, how much money we give the developing countries for the uh, adaptation and mitigation. That's what it be judged upon and also verification because I have to tell you on Kyoto not every nation lived up to its Kyoto obligations but Britain did John, John the small island states are saying that uh, anything above 1.5 degrees and that's a suicide pact for their country uh, we interviewed the president of the Maldives he said, uh, he said they, they had no future of that how are you, how, how are you as a, a representative of the British government, how are we happy to sign something that's going to see entire nations wiped out? Well, I mean, that's been the fear even from Kyoto, and we're only talking about a 5% cut in world terms then. People have got more conscious about it. I was with the President of Maldives yesterday, and I had a talk to him. We both spoke to all the parliamentarians yesterday. I did make the point about the 1.5, though, to say to him, look, you know, I understand what you mean, I know what motivates it, but if we don't get any agreement, you'd be on 4%. I mean, that's four degrees. That's what's going to happen here. We must avoid that. But this is ongoing process. Let's get this major state that this is all the nations in the world. Kyoto was only 46 industrial countries. This is everybody. So whilst it's a small step for mankind at Kyoto, it's a big step here at Copenhagen, but it's going in the right direction. And he's right to remind us that whatever deal you hear, we're going to be living with the fear of losing our nation and our homes, not simply economic difficulties. And when I hear European prime Prime Minister sometimes say to me, oh, you know, Mr. Prescott, we can't agree this European deal. We've got a lot of poor in our country. I said, none of them are on $2 a day. So please don't talk to me in the same consideration. Thanks very Thanks much. Speaking to you. Um, who do you think might be able to do